Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maverick Moses. I'm the author of the upcoming YA Dark Urban Fantasy Trilogy, Karma's Children, host of the Book Fiends Club, and founder of Story Cells, a small bookish bath shop. And today I'm going to be sharing my review of Pearl's Number. I also had the pleasure of interviewing its author, Bethany Adazade, to learn more about her, the book, and what went into writing it. So be sure to stick around for that. Pearl's Number is actually the sequel to Bethany Adazade's uh, debut novel, Evelyn's Number, and I actually did a full review of Evelyn's number on my channel so I'll link that below in the description in case you want to check it out. If you haven't read it yet, Evelyn's number is a YA dystopian fantasy where everyone who lives in the country named Eden is assigned a number that basically gives uh, their value in society. But Evelyn wants to fight back against the injustice of this numbering system. Now in Pearl's number, Evelyn is on a quest through the divided states in search of her mother, Pearl, who she just recently found out is still alive. This sequel of Bethany Adezade's debut novel was filled with adventure, shock, intrigue, and even a little bit of romance. Just like in Evelyn's number, Pearl's number is written in third person, but the chapters are broken up based on different point of views between Evelyn and Jeremiah. We get to see these characters develop further throughout the storyline, not only by looking at their different emotions and thoughts in their own personal chapters, but also getting to see them through each other's perspectives. Another point of view that this sequel gets to incorporate specifically is Pearl, Evelyn's mother, who by the way was an incredible addition to the characters just because of her great personality, her bravery, and her just downright skill. She was so much fun to read. The thing that stood out to me the most in Pearl's Number was its spectacular world building. Bethany does an amazing job depicting all the intricate details of the dystopian world while pulling you in with all of the great descriptions. I already have a really active imagination and her descriptions of everything just totally made my mind soar freely above the pages and I felt like I was standing right there next to Evelyn while she went on all of these crazy twists and turns of her adventure. Plus the beautiful map that Bethany included, which she actually drew herself, was an incredible addition to the world building because it gave off that bigger picture that you need in order to kind of understand the, this dystopian world a little better. While Evelyn's number spent a lot of the time developing the characters of Evelyn and Jeremiah, it was really refreshing to see Pearl's number start to develop the other side characters more. The sparks that fly between Olive and Soul were especially cute, and I found myself rooting for their coupling probably even more than I did Evelyn's and Jeremiah's, which probably wasn't what the author intended, but I'm totally okay with it. Now, on the topic of things that weren't really planned out, uh, I felt like the entire middle section of this quest to find Evelyn's uh, mother, Pearl, was kind of fortuitous at times. Something just seemed amiss throughout the entire middle section of this book when the search for Pearl is at its full force. I kept finding myself thinking, okay, where is this leading? Which I know that having some mystery in a book's plot really helps uh, develop the storyline and drives you forward and keeps you reading, but I just felt like the plot line of Pearl's number seemed a little too much like just like a sequence of events that was happening one after another, and not so much as an overarching plot line. Therefore, the ending, while incredibly suspenseful and exciting, seemed to kind of come out of nowhere for me and wasn't set up quite enough. But despite the rocky middle parts, I did thoroughly enjoy Pearl's number and I decided to give it four stars. There were very few lulls between scenes which really made it a fast paced and exciting read that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Pearl's number was a tale of twists and turns with an unexpected ending that will make your jaw drop. After reading Pearl's number and finishing off this duology, I was able to interview its author Bethany Adazade to learn more about her and her writing process. I started off simple and asked Bethany what inspired the idea for the number series. I think the initial inspiration was actually from my current job at the time. I worked in a hospital where the staff wore scrubs in different colors that clearly defined your role. It was supposed to make it easier to get help from the appropriate staff, but it also created some strange tensions. 
I remember the nurses looking down on the housekeeping, which I was at the time, and that led to thinking about the different classes in India, which led to studying other cultures like North Korea, and it just grew from there. Evelyn is a dynamic character who is as stubborn and sassy, but also incredibly caring and brave. So I asked Bethany if she felt that there were any parts of her inside Evelyn. To which she admitted that she tried not to craft Evelyn after herself, but in the end definitely did. I don't know about the other qualities you mentioned, but I'm definitely stubborn. I also went through a very shy stage and kind of found my voice the way Evelyn does. So I pulled from it own experience a lot in that area. As I mentioned earlier, the number series is unique in that it is written in multiple point of views, but in third person, not in first. So I was curious what went into her decision to write it like that. To which she expressed that it was a lot of trial and error. A lot of people don't know I actually started writing the first book in college over 10 years ago now. It was for my last semester where I got to choose a project and I was supposed to write the first three chapters. I wrote them in third person first, starting in some garden, no idea why, then in first person, which was horribly whiny and quickly made me go back to third person, where I started the story in what is now the middle, and proceeded to write almost completely in flashbacks. All that to say, my biggest struggle was just determining what was right. Sometimes you need to try your story the wrong way before you know the right way. There are struggles to writing in both first and third person, but you have to do what's right for the story. And I feel like I should say my favorite point of view was Evelyn, but the truth is it was Jeremiah. He was modeled after my husband in a lot of ways, and that was a lot of fun. As I mentioned in my review, the thing that stood out to me the most in Pearl's numbers specifically was the spectacular world building. So I asked Bethany if there were any specific places or cultures that helped influence her creation of this dystopian world. To which she replied, definitely. It helps me a lot to have some basis in reality. I remember thinking how the United States is so diverse and pulling a lot from that. Some of my favorite world building techniques are one, to get really specific, and two, to use comparisons that will automatically create a picture in the reader's mind. For example, since they were traveling across the continent, I decided to get specific about the roads in the different territories. Instead of trying to tell the reader that the government was refined and classy, I showed it through their roads being well maintained and organized. If the people were wild and untamed, you could see it reflected in the way the roads practically disappeared. For the people up in the mountains who kept to themselves, the roads had weeds coming up and they curved constantly so that you couldn't see too far ahead. Or an example of using comparisons was when I considered all the different speech patterns and inflections across the U.S. and described them as they traveled by inferring, using words like drawl, which is a common word for southern accents like Texans, or rapid speech, which makes me think of New Yorkers. I'm not saying that's what they actually were, but you can find yourself picturing someone you know who draws or talks really fast, and that comparison can create more imagery in a second than you could with paragraphs of description. The number series definitely had some emotional parts. I know in general, I'm a pretty emotional reader and I get very invested in the storyline, but I was curious to see if there were any parts when writing where the story just felt too real to Bethany that she started getting emotional too. Not really, to be honest. If you've heard of the Myers-Briggs personality test, I'm the personality type called ISTJ, which means that I often approach things a bit more logic-based than feelings-based. Not to say that I don't have feelings because someone else's book could definitely make me cry, but not my own, at least not so far. I went on to ask if there was anything that she edited out of Evelyn's number or Pearl's number that didn't quite fit right. Heck yes, <laughs> I edited a lot out of both books. In Evelyn's number, I can't even count how much I threw away. Three partial drafts were tossed for sure. I know I also threw out the prologue at some point, and then in Pearl's number, I tossed the entire second half of the first draft. That was a major bummer. It was probably almost 50k, but I had to write that sucky ending to know what had to change. Suffice to say, when Pearl showed up in the original version, she was the worst, and it led to a very anticlimactic ending. The number series is a dystopian fantasy, so I asked Bethany what she liked about writing in that genre and what other genres she would like to explore in the future. World building is probably my favorite thing about dystopian and fantasy. I'm currently exploring both fantasy and nonfiction, which I think I'll probably stick to from now on. 
there's actually a lot I wouldn't write. I was just doing keyword research and there's hundreds of genres out there, but if I had to pick one, I'd say I could never write horror. The suspense would drive me insane before I ever finished. What's great about any book is the way that it can spark something in the reader's mind and influence you in fun and unique ways. So I asked Bethany if there were any specific themes or messages that she tried to convey to the readers. I think Evelyn's number is really focused on her learning to accept herself and be proud of who she is, not worrying about what other people say. So that's probably the main theme for book one. And Pearl's number is in a lot of ways about accepting who other people are as they are, which they kind of go together with an acceptance theme. I always like ending my author interviews with some fun questions. So starting off with my go-to fun question, I asked Bethany what celebrities she pictures in her mind who would play Evelyn and Jeremiah in the movie version of the number series. To which she replied that she has their aesthetics on her Pinterest boards, but she doesn't actually know their names. But Jeremiah would have to be Persian because she based him largely on her husband. As I mentioned in my review, I really loved reading the love connection that sparked between Olive and Soul. So I was curious and I asked Bethany what relationship development was the most fun to write, Evelyn's and Jeremiah's or Olive's and Soul's. I love that people like Olive and Soul because their spark was a complete accident. I think multiple betas pointed out how cute they were and that they hoped something would happen and I was like, okay, I can do that. I think Olive and Soul were a bit more fun because I didn't have to plan as much. It sort of happened more naturally, if that makes sense. And then funny enough, there's a lot of me in Olive as well and other characteristics of my husband in Soul. So I think I sprinkled bits of my own relationship into both couples. I had so much fun reading Pearl's number and interviewing its author. Thank you so much, Bethany Adazade, for the fantastic answers. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments below if you've read Pearl's number and what you thought of it or if I sparked your interest in reading the number series. Please hit that subscribe button and help support my channel. I would really appreciate it and be sure to follow me on Instagram for more on my TBR list, my writing, and see some cool aesthetically pleasing bookstagram photos. Then go from me on Goodreads so we can connect more on our mutual love of books. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!